Hey, I'm Kelsey and welcome to my channel. This is my very first floss tube, which I didn't even know was a thing. I didn't know this many people cross-stitched. Um, so I'm excited to kind of join this fun little community of other stitchers because I thought I was the only one who liked to do this kind of stuff. So <laughs> I am really excited to um, do this and I, um, I actually make videos as a job, so this seemed like a nice little thing to do. So just a little bit about me. I live in Colorado. I have a nine-year-old daughter and I've been married to my husband for 12 years now. And we have two cats and a dog. For my real job, I have my own business. I create videos, mostly for weddings and small businesses, but I also do YouTube videos for other businesses and people and online courses and all that good stuff. So um, making my own YouTube videos uh, is a struggle because I do it for a living. So in my spare time, I don't want to make more videos, but I thought it would be really fun, especially with this kind of hobby and all the people out there who are doing them. So I wanted to jump in. I started cross stitching when I was much younger. Uh, my grandmother and my mom taught me how to, when I was like, I don't know, my tween, <laughs> early teens, um, and I kind of stopped doing that and then uh, the pandemic happened and I just picked up a lot of other hobbies and re-picked up hobbies. I started drawing. Um, something I always wanted to do was do art. So I have started drawing. I started coloring um, in a lot of adult coloring books. I have a large collection of them now. Um, so I might share some of those kind of things here. Um, and then I also started to cross stitch again um, and I also started to embroider which I have never done so that's been kind of a fun learning experience. Yeah I always remember cross stitching and thinking oh this is like fun but everything all the patterns that you see in the kits that you see were kind of a little cheesy or they felt like they were a little uh, traditional and that's not like my style very much. So um, one day I was on Etsy and I saw cross stitch patterns and there was just so many and I absolutely loved them. And I, and I really like all the ones from TV and movies and um, pop culture. So I got really excited about cross stitching again because I could do all these really cool um, fun ones that actually like fit my style and pertain to me and the things that I like. Um, so I jumped back in to cross stitch and it's a really great thing uh, for me. I really like to cross stitch while I am sitting and watching TV and relaxing um, because if I am not doing something with my hands like coloring or stitching or uh, playing a game on my phone or something, um, I tend to snack and I'm trying not to snack as much. So I try to keep my hands busy because idle hands find the snacks. Um, so that's why I've called my channel uh, Cross Stitch and Chill because that is what I like to do. I like to cross stitch while I have other things. I also like to listen to audiobooks while I'm cross stitching. Um, pretty much just anything to keep my hands busy and my mind busy so that I don't just zone out. I also wanted to spend a lot less time on my phone. I felt like I was always on my phone scrolling in, uh, scrolling through social media and it was just not good for my mental health. <laughs> so I decided to find some activities to do that didn't involve sitting and being on my phone and watching TV. I wanted to be doing something a little more creative. So I started doing art and stitching and coloring and all that stuff and it's been, um, a really great way to be off of social media and a little, be a little more intentional about it. So on this channel, I want to share uh, the 
projects that I've finished, the projects that I am working on, and um, also you know what kind of shows and TV and books and things that I am getting into while I am uh, stitching. So uh, without further ado, I think I will start. Um, I tend to give away my cross stitches when I'm finished with them um, because I don't want to have too many around the house. I've made my daughter one. I've made my husband one. I have them on my Instagram. I'm not going to show them here, um, but I've made my mom one, uh, my grandmother one, and I just wanted to give them away because really it's just something for me to do and not something where I want to keep everything. So um, I have a few of the ones that I did. This one was the very first one that I did when I started back up cross stitching and it is a quote from Schitt's Creek if you've ever seen it and I do a lot of Schitt's Creek ones um, but it says best wishes, warmest regards and it was really just something to pick up and like warm up back to like oh I remember I did this but how do I do this again? So it was a really nice um, way to get back into it with like these simple flowers and the back stitching. Um, so it was just a good like warm up reminder about like what I'm doing and now I use it like for testing sometimes <laughs> if I'm trying to do something new. Um, so my next finished one that I'm going to show is uh, the embroidery that I did. Um, I've done a few embroidery projects but again gave them away. <laughs> I created one for my sister-in-law for my little niece. It was a rainbow and it had her name on the bottom to put in her nursery um, because she is a rainbow baby. So I was really excited to send her that and I thought it would be really cute in her um, nursery. But this one I just did for fun to like mess around and kind of like figure out what embroidery was all about and trying to figure out like how to uh, actually do a lot of the stitches and the knots and everything so it's just a bunch of flowers I really like flowers <laughs> um, I am I really like floral things and flowers but I um, I don't know anything about flowers I don't know what most of them are called I don't know I kill them really easily so <laughs> yeah so I try to keep you know flowers like this in my life um, versus <laughs> real flowers because I can't do that. When I go and shoot weddings, I'm always like obsessed with the bouquet and I'm always chatting with the florists and being like, oh, what is that called? Oh, I've never seen that before. So I love florals. Um, and I think when I'm doing embroidery, I like doing the embroidery uh, florals. I have a future project with floral embroidery. I will try and remember to share. Um, so with that, I'm gonna move on to my whips, my work in progress. Um, projects. So this one I have been working on for what feels like forever, but it's this really cool like Harry Potter landscape. It's got the Hogwarts castle and the stag um, horns going around it. And um, I wanted to do this one because I wanted something that was going to take a while. And that is exactly what I got. <laughs> it's taken forever. Um, this pattern is by uh, two by two stitch art that I got on Etsy. And I forgot to mention that the um, floral embroidery, that one is Vingert on Etsy. And then the best wishes, warmest regards was from the music makers. Um, sorry, I for forgot about that. Um, but anyway, back to my Hogwarts landscape here um yeah I think once I finished like all the blue which I don't know if you can really tell but there's like three different kinds of blue in there um that are kind of all like swirly together I was like oh great well I did it on the white Aida so can I just like leave it and not stitch the white and I asked some people and they're like, no, stitch the white, stitch the white. So that's what I'm doing right now is stitching the white. I'm like, I've gotten most of this done. I'm like down here now. Um, so I don't have a ton left to do. It's just tedious and it's taking forever. And 
I think it's not very satisfying because I stitch the white and nothing really changes. It looks exactly the same, just, you know, a little fuller, I guess. I don't know. So it's kind of been one that I am stitching away at, but it's definitely been a little bit of a pain. <laughs> um, I'll be excited when it's done because um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I keep telling people they can have it, but I've told like six people they can have it. So I, I might just throw it up on my Instagram and be like, hey, everybody, who wants it? First one to respond. Um, because that, I don't know, it's not one that I want to hang up anywhere in my house. And uh, I'd rather have somebody hang it up in, in their house um, and enjoy it. All right, so my other work in progress is a pattern from Cross Stitch Kick. And this one my daughter picked out and I picked it because it was pretty simple um, because I wanted to try stitching in hand and doing the sewing method. Um, and this has been a really good project for it. So it's just this little cat and it says chonk on it. <laughs> and um, I like this one, I think it's really cute but pretty much since it was just a long rows of stitches and a big chunk of black, um, I've been practicing my sewing in hand and uh, using the sewing method, which I like. It is a lot faster. This one has gotten done rather quickly. I've only been working on it for a few weeks. Um, and I have my little wonder clips right here to keep it um, from unrolling on me and keep it so I don't have to stretch my hand too far across um, or crinkle up the fabric. Um, so yeah, I also tried gritting on this one. That's what the red lines are because I wanted to get faster. So I tried doing the gritting method on there and I feel like it's not really for me, maybe for a bigger project or something. Um, it would be better, but for this, it was like taking forever and I was like, Oh, I could, I could have finished this thing by the time I finished gritting it. So I did the vertical lines, but I didn't do anything else. Um, but yeah, I like, I like this one for learning how to do the sewing method and I really like it. I tried doing the sewing method on this one with the white fill in parts and, um, I don't think it was as good because, you know, there's so much space and I think if I had done sewing method for like these big chunks of blue and stuff, it would have been better. But since I only did the sewing, since I've, you know, this is like a big chunk of the same color. So it's pretty easy to just go, 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 go. Um, this one, since there's so many gaps and stuff, it was a lot harder. So um, yeah, I, I put it back in the hoop and um, I've been doing the hoop one with that one and just doing the stab uh, method. Is that what it's called? The stab method? That sounds terrible. Um, but yeah, so my chonk one is almost done. I think I just still have like a little bit of his legs to do um, and the other in the bottom part of his body and then um, his eyes and ears and everything will get filled in uh, with some of the pink that's up here and some gray. So that one's almost done. I should be able to finish that one relatively soon. I just keep wanting to finish this one. So I keep going back to it. And typically I am not a person who likes to have several open projects. Uh, like in my professional business, I'm learning how to be better about that because of, um, you know, I, I work with some people on like a monthly basis. So I have tight timelines with them. And then I work with people who are like their wedding and I, I have like 10 to 12 weeks to get their wedding done. Um, so I try to kind of balance that out. Um, and, and I'm getting okay with having several projects open at the same time because I used to just mostly do weddings and it was like, okay, well, I can't start this wedding until this wedding is done. And yeah, so this is helping my um, perfectionist problems must only have one thing to concentrate on at a time. Um, I'm 
my last work in progress was just something like fun I wanted to do. I just wanted to try it out basically. And I'm not sure I enjoy it or maybe I'm just not good at it. I don't know. But I took a photo from, um, it's actually a screenshot from a wedding I shot in Iceland last year. And um, I'll throw it up on the screen. But I basically took it and I turned it into like a vector art. And then I was trying to embroider it. Um, and I don't know, I don't love it. <laughs> Maybe if I like worked on it a little bit more and got more into it, I think I just don't know like what kind of stitches to use for like the clothing. Like I have this idea in my head of what I want it to look like when I'm stitching it and it doesn't look like that. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, well that was dumb. Um, but yeah, and I'm doing it on Ada, which I think the other ones that I've done are just on regular fabric, like cotton. Um, I don't even know what they were because I don't really know what you're supposed to use. So <laughs> it's just used whatever. Um, so I decided to do that, the, this on the Ada, I don't know why, because I thought maybe I could do better. I don't know, but I don't, I don't love it. So I haven't been working on it really because I'm kind of like, meh, but you know, I got her dress done and you know, I have, I had, dreams about how this was going to look and it's not it's not going the way I planned all right future projects so I'm really excited about a couple of the future projects that I have going on um I am a really big Marvel fan um I really like watching Marvel and uh superhero movies and things like that and one of our favorite movies is Thor Ragnarok. And I've seen it like a million times. And I love that director. I can never say his name, but he is hilarious. I love all of his shows. Um, if you haven't watched Our Flag Means Death on HBO, it's so good, so funny. I love those guys. <laughs> but so Thor Ragnarok is one of our favorites. We haven't watched Love and Thunder yet. So don't say anything to me about it because I'm, I want, I think this weekend we're gonna watch it, which is, I've been so busy. But I got a pattern from uh, Circus Stitches and it's like, I'll put it up. I don't have a printout of it, so I'll put it up on the screen, but it basically says, behold my stuff, which <laughs> is a line from one of the characters. Um, and he's basically traveled around the universe into all the realms and has like gathered a bunch of stuff. Like he has a shake weight and he talks about his guns that he got from Texas. And <laughs> um, it's just a funny line and we say it all the time. We're always like, behold my stuff. And so it's kind of a funny little thing. So I wanted to uh, take it and put it on a bag. So I haven't done anything like that. I've never embroidered on like furniture, but or not furniture, but like an actual object. Um, so it should be a fun little learning curve with that. Um, I got this DMC soluble canvas. Um, and I think it's like 14 count and it's like plastic. So it's kind of hard um, and it's soluble. So once you sew on it, you put it in water and it dissolves. And then you're just left with your bag with your little cross stitch on it. Um, I know a lot of people mostly use that for like embroidery, um, but I didn't want to embroider. I found this cross stitch pattern and I love it. And I'm really excited about that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I have two tote bags here. So I have this one, which honestly I think is the one that I want to put it on. Um, it's like brown and it's supposed to be gray, but it, it's pretty brown. Um, but this is like more of something I would use every day, like as a purse or bag or something. Um, and the lining I can kind of cut out really easily because um, there's like pockets on this side, but I could pull out the lining and, and cut it and resew it pretty easily. Um, I don't, have the best sewing skills, but I can sew in a straight line. I think I can handle that. Um, and then I got this one, which is just like a plain canvas tote. Um, my husband suggested that I do it on this one first, and then, uh, maybe give it away to somebody. <laughs> 
and then I can see how it works and then I can do it on the one I actually want to use. So we'll see um, where I end up with that. It's They're kind of big because the pattern is like 10 inches wide. Um, so I had to kind of find a big one. I, I probably would prefer a smaller bag, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, especially when I don't want to spend a ton of money because it's like an experiment. <laughs> the other fuser project I got is a big one because I hate myself, you know, I thought that my Harry Potter one was bad. So I just bought a huge like full coverage one of the town of Schitt's Creek and it has the buildings like the motel and the Cafe Tropical and uh, Rose Apothecary and everything. So it has like all the um, buildings on it. And who is that pattern from? It's from Stitchy Time Designs. Um, I think it might be a good candidate for another one doing um, stitching in hand and doing the sewing method um, because it's a lot and it's huge. <laughs> and it might be one I actually keep and put on my wall because I I really like Schitt's Creek. Um, and if they, you haven't watched that one, you should watch that one. Um, I kind of want to watch it again because it's so funny. But yeah, I probably won't start that one for a little bit, but I am looking forward to starting it. Um, I'll probably finish these two and then I'll start working on the bag and the Schitt's Creek. Um, there's a dog down here. And then another pie in the sky um, future project that I have going on is... I gotta get him. Uh, I bought these little white canvas shoes from Amazon. They're just like plain like kids basically. And um, I want to embroider some like flowers on it. So I don't know. We'll see <laughs> how that goes. Uh, kind of an experiment. I bought them in my size, so they'll be for me, but I had told my sister I was thinking about doing this and she was like, oh, that sounds cool. I want some. So uh, maybe if mine turn out okay, I might do that for her, for like her birthday, which is in June. So I have plenty of time to procrastinate. So those are all the stitchy things I have going on. Um, as far as like shows and things that I've been watching, uh, we've obviously been watching House of the Dragon on HBO. Uh, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, I won't go too far into it since it's new. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but we've been enjoying it. My husband said it was kind of boring at first, but this last episode, we're like, oh, hey, here we go. Here's the Game of Thrones we love and we know and love because uh, it was a little crazy, but good. A crazy in a good way. <laughs> I've also been catching up on, I actually just finished it yesterday, uh, the new season of What We Do in the Shadows, which again is by the guy that directed Thor. I, I cannot pronounce his name. It starts with a T, his last name starts with a W. Um, I have such a hard time. Like I hear it and I remember it. And then the next time I need to use it, I'm like, wait, what, what was it? So I finished What We Do in the Shadows last night and continued watching Only Murders in the Building on Hulu, which um, I really like that one. I like Selena Gomez and I think she's really funny. And obviously Steve Martin and Martin Short are you know, classic people. But uh, the episode I watched last night was really serious. I watched episode five, I think, and my husband caught the end of it and he was like, I thought this show was supposed to be funny. <laughs> and I was like, it, it normally is. This is just a weird episode. Like it was really serious. Um, so I really like that one. I like the characters. I like the comedy. Uh, I don't really buy them getting into those situations, but I feel like that's kind of the point of that kind of show is that it's mostly unbelievable and that's why it's fun and you just gotta take it for what it is. I also like true crime. I don't know why. I think it's just fascinating. It's fascinating to like why these people do what they do and how do they get to this point and like sometimes it's a little bit of a research project like okay don't do that if you don't want to get murdered um but I I just am fascinated with like crime and I mostly just like documentaries a lot um and I had to watch them in college and uh there's just been some where you're like this is messed up and I don't know why I like the messed up ones so much but <laughs> Um, 
so I did just finish a Netflix documentary like Sins of Our Mother and um, I actually had watched a short YouTube documentary about it and then it popped up on my Netflix and you know they're watching me but it was really interesting just like psychologically how you get to that point that one was really short that was only like three episodes and uh at one point I wanted to finish it and so I made my husband go upstairs and play video games because he doesn't like to watch them. <laughs> I also just finished reading The Handmaid's Tale um, because the TV show looked a little too scary and dramatic and crazy for me. <laughs> and I, I like drama and I like, you know, I watch Game of Thrones, it's very graphic and I mean, sometimes I can handle it but it, sometimes it's like, it's too much, I can't, I can't have all of that. So um, I did finish the book Handmaid's Tale and I will be honest, I was a little upset. I hate endings that like, it's not so much like open-ended. It's just, I felt like the whole book was really slow and I was a little bored most of the time. It took me like six months to finish this book. and It's not very big. Um, and just, you know, the narrator, I understand like the way it was written and I appreciate that but the ending I just didn't like and I, I don't see myself reading the next one because I felt like this one was so slow and like the things that were supposed to be exciting and dramatic I was like hmm whatever cool <laughs> it all just like sped up at the end and like the last 50 pages was like whoa what is going on but not like enough for me to pick up the second book or watch the show I don't know so anyway <laughs> those are the things that I've been watching and reading and um enjoying lately I think like I said we're gonna watch Thor Love and Thunder soon uh I watched the new Pinocchio movie the live action one and I wish Disney would just come up with something new like you know stop rehashing all the old stuff I mean I didn't really like the original Pinocchio to begin with so the live action one I found Pinocchio pretty creepy and uh yeah I mean Tom Hanks obviously fabulous <laughs> he makes anything better but the rest of it was a little not not what I wanted to do with my evening so um so anyway uh, thank you for watching this first one. Uh, if you really, really loved it, you can subscribe, but hopefully um, I'll get some more out and I will try to do these like monthly. Um, I don't think weekly is going to really be interesting. So, uh, but you can find me on Instagram at cross stitch and chill. It's the, with the X, so X stitch and chill. And I will post kind of some more like work in progress on a on a shorter basis and things I finished and things I'm working on um, instead of doing that all here. So hopefully um, you enjoyed this and we will talk soon. Thanks.